uh, you know, I'm not a fan of many things. Yeah? You just happen to be in there maybe a little bit. Why is that? We disagree on some things. I think we might get on though. <laughs> That's why I'm like interested. Great, off to a great start. He hates me. I think it's very important to be able to clear view. If you don't agree with someone, it doesn't mean you have to hate them, but exactly. you know, but I think being too agreeable is not good. Very really? Bad. Especially as a man. Because typically if a guy is too agreeable, you can't trust him. Really? Yeah. Why? Because all men want to get laid. And if you don't tell the truth and you're just being agreeable, well, he's trying to get laid and he's trying to lie as well. So. Well, at least a man actually admits all men are trying to get laid. Oh, yeah, 100%. It's absolutely pointless to have a female friend. No, no, it's not pointless to have a female friend. Very pointless. 100%. Why would guys sit there and be... My friends. Absolutely not. It's a waste of time. How is it a waste of time? Because women don't offer much utility to you as a guy. What makes you think that? Well, hmm. I mean, if you get in some kind of fight, she can't do nothing. What's she going to do? She's going to be like, oh, my God. It's like, Why would then, you want a woman If anything, fight? she's a liability. That's what I'm trying yeah, to say. But a woman would fight. Like, I'd fight a woman for you if you're my man. I don't want my girl to be involved in any type of physical confrontation. Really? That's, that's not her job. That's my job. So I look at it like, if I'm with a girl and I'm supposed to protect her and provide for her, etc., I want that to be my woman. I'm not going to give that type of energy to, like, a friend. That's stupid. Why am I going to put my life on the line for a girl that doesn't even suck my dick? Wait, but is that too much there? I, don't, I think you should just be able to have a friendship with women, though. Well, well firstly, it's not always like men versus women. Mm -hmm. So I kind of feel like having female friends will give you that balance to understand, like, there's actually nice, normal women out there that aren't just trying to sleep with you, like, for your money or everything like that. We, we bring a lot of value. I've interviewed almost 1,600 women now at this point, and I would say, without a shadow of a doubt, women are absolutely terrible at being, uh, understanding what it takes to be attractive to women as a man. Hmm. So their advice typically is not good at all. 1,600 women. Poor women. Men carry like a lot of like hurt and they push it on women. Okay. Hurt in what way? Yeah, I, I think it's because like, for example, this incel culture, which like respectfully, like your podcast <laughs> uh -huh. really brings to life. Mm -hmm. You're just projecting onto women unnecessarily because there's a lot of good women. Like I myself would say I'm a good woman. I don't do anything wrong. I'm very loyal. I'm a kind woman. And a lot of men will make the assumptions because of podcasts like yours and people and men like you to then push that onto me, that I'm a, this kind of woman, I'm a gold digger and I'm this and that and I'm not. Well, the reality is, would it be fair to say that most men, I mean, you said there's a whole insult culture, et cetera. Would it be fair to say that most guys are losers and don't, don't really measure up? I personally don't think that. But Keep it I a thousand. No, but I'm Keep it no, a thousand. No, I personally don't. Like, genuinely, I don't. Okay. Like, I genuinely Being don't. politically correct. I'll keep it real since you don't want to. Most guys, I'll be honest, are fat losers and don't have leadership qualities. And there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. And most women, quite frankly, are terrible. They're whores, fat, rude, crass, whatever it may be. And most of them don't qualify for a relationship and most guys don't qualify to be the leader of said relationships. I think it goes on both parts, okay? The men are weak and the women, there's a bunch of issues there. So what we basically highlight on our podcast is you need to be the best version of yourself. And I think the thing is, is that guys are yearning for this because We've been lying to men for the better part of five to six decades about what Lynn and Strong actually is. We've been demonizing it when in reality, guys need to become stronger. Because no woman wants a weak man even though girls say dumb shit like, oh, well, you know, I want you to be emotionally intelligent and get in tune with your feelings or whatever. It's all a lie. Oh, see. Okay. No, there's a, but I personally would like a man that's emotionally available and emotionally intelligent, but it's not me saying like, I want you crying all the time. So, do you know what I mean? I, I, it's true though. Like, so I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, you have to give some room for men because, like, men's mental health issue. We tell guys not to be vulnerable in front of your girl. You know, you, you go ahead, you're going to be vulnerable, you're going to shed a tear, whatever. You do that around other men that understand, you know, the male experience. Women don't understand the male experience at all. And it, it goes to show, like, when I said earlier, when you put the girl in a male perspective, I want you to pick up this girl. They always fall flat on their face because women are in a privileged position where they don't have to necessarily understand what it takes to attract a man because men come to them. For me, as a partner, I would want to be able to give my man a safe space to be able to be vulnerable and it's like, but not completely like, oh my God, cry all the time, but just so he knows like, it's like things are okay. You know, like it's supposed to be a partnership. There, no, it's not a partnership. Why That's another not? common lie in modern day dating. It's no, not but, a partnership. But I want a partnership though. Question for you. Do you want a man that's taller than you? Um, Idealistically yeah. speaking? I do think probably because I like to wear heels. I like to be safe. Fantastic. Do you want a guy that's stronger than you? Yeah. Do you want a guy that makes more money than you? I'm not fussed about money. Okay. Well, you want it to make at least your equivalent, if not preferably better. It's your ideal guy. Yeah. Okay. Do you want a guy that's more confident than yourself? <laughs>
I could be like a bad day, I go around Izzy, it's like everything just goes away. I want to make sure every single day. Okay, find a guy that's more confident than yourself. Yeah. More experienced than yourself. Yeah. Okay, you basically describe the superior. So you expect this guy to come in and have a partnership with you? Whatever he might excel on, I'll also add value in other ways. Because it's not always about being physically on the same, on par with that person, just for certain requirements. Like, you can't birth a baby. You know, yeah, like that. but so, so we complement each other in other ways, and so we're still equal in that sense. Men and women are not equal at all, at all. That's another fallacy that we have in modern day dating culture, which leads so many women astray. And we're not the same. There's certain things that men can do that women can that can't do, and vice versa. And we're different, and we're designed to complement each other. And I don't believe in partnerships. I can come in and lead. Women follow. Um, and I find it funny because women typically want a man. And it, here's the thing: what you just described is what a girl wants but they think that they're gonna go into a relationship with a guy that's better than them in every single metric and it's gonna be an equal partnership or 50-50. It doesn't work that way. There's always a leader, there's always a decider, and for it to work, the man's gotta be in the leadership role, never the woman. Women can't lead anything. Yeah, we can. Not even. It creates too much pressure on you as a man then. Because if, if you wanna be this like macho man, do you not think that's gonna cause a lot of strain on a relationship? Pressure creates diamonds. Because here's the thing, women are just the cherry on top. Like, you, you should have already built the cake by the time she comes into the picture. You know, you should have already conquered a boardroom or conquered uh, some kind of physical labor, or played uh, sports at some point in your life, uh, endured some kind of stress. Like, men need to go through pain. Men must become. Women are, men must become. Being a loser is unacceptable. If you're broke, fat, or you don't got your stuff together, that's your problem. Yeah, but then men like you would complain about women because you'd say, oh, they only come for, like, the glory of it like, and not the graph. So I'd rather be with someone that I'm building with. Oh, I've never, I've never, I've never said that women build. I actually say the contrary. I say women don't build; they move in. Yeah, but and don't I, you? And say... I acknowledge that cold reality 100%. I tell guys they need to build the castle so that she can come in and, you know, put some things up here and there in your castle. But at the end of the day, you got to build the structure. Women are going to build it with you. Those days are done. Women but want to guys. Do. Some simple. women do though. Like a lot of women do. Some. No, a few. Like the ones I know. I would say a minority. A majority want a guy that comes pre-assembled. What? What is he talking about? So we got to go off of the majority, not the minority. If I'm advising men how to you know, operate in the dating marketplace, I can't tell them, look out for this 10% that wants to build with you. No, the reality is most women want you to come pre-assembled. And to be honest, the most attractive and youngest women that have the most options, they definitely want you to come pre-assembled. Women want winners. They sit at the finish line and pick the winners. Where did you grow up? I grew up in New Britain, Connecticut. Okay. Two hours north of New York City. So what was your upbringing like? Great. Parents were together the whole time. Stable. I had a sister, brother. Um, still, I mean, they're, they're still alive now. I haven't said had. But yeah. <laughs> uh, like, they're gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I grew up, went, went to high school, played basketball in high school, played video games. Had still have my childhood friends to this day. I, I would say I grew up, like, in a pretty good situation. We didn't grow up with money, right? We grew up fairly, you know, poor, low, you know, lower middle class. My parents struggled, especially in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I, th I think it's important for young men to grow up, like, struggling. Yeah. I think it's, you, you, it builds character. You have to do it. How will you raise a son with your mindset? I'm just curious to know. <laughs> uh, I would raise my son to not be a victim. Uh, you know, I'm at a point now where uh, very successful financially, but my son would not see any of this money at all. Yeah. I would make him get it out the mud. That's because, um, like we discussed before, trust fund babies typically don't know what to do in life and how to, you know, they don't understand and appreciate the value of a dollar. And I thank my dad for instilling in that, uh, that in me early. I mean, my first job was at McDonald's and I got fired and I quickly learned that I didn't want to be in the service industry, but it made me appreciate people in the service industry. So what, what is this, by the way? So this is like a tonic wine. When I drink, I'm quite a mellow person, chill, through the mood. You're not an angry drunk? No, not actually. No, okay, that's no. good. I'd be the worst angry drunk. Yeah, well, I could tell. So do you not drink? I don't, it's haram. So you, have you never drunk? I have, I definitely have. But I mean, it's not really conducive to my life at the moment, so I don't really drink like that. It's just more self-awareness, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, as a guy, man, you, you can't afford to have things that clout your, you know, your inhibition or your ability to go out there and create and become a better version of yourself. And I think like, that's why I'm really big on like, not drinking, doing drugs, any of that stuff. You gotta be focused all the time. Hmm. So how do you find dating then, with the way that you are? I mean, when you understand uh, the code, it's, you know, plug and play. It's like, okay, de s deal with the girl, size her up, figure out what kind of chick she is, and then bam, you know, you, you already know kind of how to, how to move. So, like, what's the code? Depends on the girl. 
Okay. You got to be able to adapt based on the woman that you're sitting across the table from. Yeah, I have the female codes in my sleeves. I know pretty much where, what they all are. Okay, so how are you adapting to me right now? You want me to be honest? Yeah, of course. Okay, I would I say... I will go now and then I'll ask the code again by the end of it. Yeah, I, I would say uh, recreational use only, no offense. So what's like the... how many codes is there? Well, it depends on the girl. You know, you, if you deal with a girl that's younger, that's in her prime years, well, you got to understand that she's more, you know, inclined to look for fun. If you're dealing with a girl that is in her mid-20s, a lot of times she might be pursuing, you know, it depends on the girl, but she might be pursuing some type of stability or some security, and you got to play at that angle. Or if you deal with a girl that's a little bit older, late 20s, 30s, and up, nine out of 10 times she's going to want some type of security if she hasn't gotten it already. Code, it's not even that deep. Like, either you like them or not, you don't need to put them in categories. Wow, with your perforations, here's so much better. Charmin also smooth awesome hair. You know, say that you're cutting? So what kind of women do you want? Sorry. Me? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I can deal with whatever. My thing is, I need to come into my life and be an asset and not a liability. Right. Most girls are liabilities, to be honest. Do you think? I think 100%. the right woman, though, could, like, really just compliment you and make you, like, progress in your life. Well, you got to train them. No, you haven't. In order to train someone, you need them to listen. I'm telling you, no woman is listening to you. Girls come into your life, like, and if you don't know what you're doing, she's going to come in as a liability, 100%. No, you don't train them, though. You have to train it's them. It's like training a dog. You wouldn't do that. Oh, here we go. I knew that was going to be... No, but it's true, though. It's, it's not training. It's not something like, once again, it's just seeing this person as your equal. Okay, but showing the person respect. It's not training. So I look at it like if I'm going to have a girlfriend and she's going to be my girl and she's going to have my title, well, she's got to be trained to rise up to a certain level because I'm going to make her into an asset. Buy me a bag, do this, blah, blah, blah. Take me on trips, whatever, when they haven't earned it. So you got to detrain those bad behaviors out of that girl and make her an asset into your life versus a liability. Most guys don't understand their value. They bring her into their life. They give her everything. She hasn't earned it. She doesn't respect them. She's walking all over him. She starts to dictate the relationship. You're not getting sex tonight, blah, blah, blah. He's so rude. Obviously, can't argue, but there's I mean, this is this is this is biology. Women are hardwired to extract resources from men. It's been that way since the beginning of time. Biology rules everything, guys. They could sit there and say, "Oh, but I'm doing this and my truth." Blah blah blah. Biology rules you. There's one truth. There's no such thing as my truth. Female, typical, blah 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 trash. No, but I kind of feel like, from my experience, if I've gone into if I'm going into someone's life, I would want to add value, so I wouldn't really take things. And I kind of feel when you. What did you just say two seconds ago? You said, in my experience, yeah, my I come experience. in and I add a value. Yeah. That's you. Majority of women come in, meet the guy. Okay, what can I get from this guy? Okay, this guy's a simp. I'll just take him out on dinner dates he could pay. I'm never going to smash him. What? Another guy, this guy's hot. He likes smashing my guy. I can do my plumbing, but I'll give him a BJ once. Girls put guys in roles. It's your job as the man to make sure that you're the top guy and you got the main role where you're not investing too much and she's investing more in you. Girls only respect men that they invest in. The girl always has to like the guy more than she likes him. No, I think it works better the other way around. When the guy likes the girl more? Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Why doesn't it make sense? Because women want a man that's better than them. So how do I look if I'm better than you and I'm sitting here chasing after you? It doesn't make sense. Women only respect men that they chase. It doesn't work the other way around. Once again, with this like new wave of women, we don't want to keep fighting for a man that's, if he's going to treat you like an option. <laughs> See, here's the thing. We can say that women are changing whatever, but we're all slaves to our biology. Women are 100% okay with sharing men. It's been that way since the beginning of time. It's, I would say it's even more apparent now. With Instagram, dating apps, etc. a minority of men are getting a majority of the women. And women are okay with that. I mean, walk into a nightclub. Walk into a nightclub is probably one of the most carnal representations of human nature. All the women are 